Hey class, today we're going to be learning about scientists. Now I know what you're thinking. This is social studies class. Why are we learning about scientists? That's because some scientists are actually very historical. So before we get started on the scientists, let's just review some of the scientific inventions that we already learned this year. The compass uses the magnetism of the earth to help sailors determine direction. The astrolabe sailors used to navigate their ships using the stars. Rudders uh, were used to steer the ship, a new design of the ship. The caravel was a new type of ship that allowed them to go in shallow waterways. And of course, gunpowder that allows people to take over the world. So these new scientific inventions allow Europeans to explore and realize that the world that they had always known was actually not what they thought it was. The world was a lot bigger. There are areas that existed they had never heard about before. So people are going to start questioning what they already know. They want to find the truth and answers um, to things that maybe they had been uh, learning before, but that may not be totally true. So here's our standard. We're going to summarize the achievements and contributions of the scientific revolution. We're talking about the roots, the development of the scientific method, and scientific thought versus religious beliefs. All right, let's talk about some causes of the scientific revolution. What brings this revolution on? First, people start thinking differently about science and religion. Scientists want to make their own observations. They're going to do other scientific experiments. So rather than just focusing on what everyone has already told them, they're going to make sure that those people are correct and figure it out for themselves. They're not just going to rely on past scientists like Aristotle. Um, the next thing, new ideas and experiments. Like I said, they're going to do their own experiments. They're going to come up with their own ideas based on observation and say, why does this happen? What is the reason why somebody dies? Is it because God wanted them to die and go to heaven? Or is it because they ate too many cheeseburgers? So scientists are really going to focus on um, finding their own answers rather than just listening to everybody else. All right, vocabulary term time. You need to know what the scientific revolution is, of course. Now, a revolution isn't just people fighting and freaking out. It's also just a change, a major change, a paradigm-shifting event. So the scientific revolution is when there's a growth and advancement in science and math, and the growth and advancement is so big, it changes the future. All right. One invention we also need to talk about is the printing press. Now, you learned about this in sixth grade and how it changed the world when they were finally able to print books uh, pretty quickly. And they, they printed off the Bible like crazy, and people were able to have access um, to the Bible where they could read the Bible, come to their own conclusions, not just listen to everything the church said. Well, now these scientists are going to do all of these experiments and they can spread the information with the use of the printing press. All right, so let's get started on some of these scientists that you need to know. First, we've got Copernicus and Ptolemy. Now, Ptolemy is an older scientist. He was Egyptian and he believed that the sun went around the earth. So the earth was the center and the sun revolved around the earth. We call that geocentric. So Ptolemy spread the news that, that our universe was geocentric. The earth is the center. The church really liked this, of course, because God made the earth. People on the earth are the most important thing. So God made us the center of the galaxy. Um, then Copernicus comes along, and Copernicus says, no. You're wrong. I'm sorry, but the earth revolves around the sun. The sun is the center, and that is that is a heliocentric theory, when the sun is the center. So we've got these two arguments. What's the center, the earth or the sun? Are we geocentric? Are we heliocentric? So scientists are going to try to figure this out um, and basically take a side. Are you heliocentric? Are you geocentric? So Ptolemy is geocentric, earth-centered, which the church agrees with. 
Copernicus is heliocentric or sun-centered. There's also progress made in medicine. So before this time, if someone sneezed, achoo! it could be that they were possessed by demons. And so you said, bless you, because you were helping them get rid of their demons. Or if you came down with the bubonic plague, we would sprinkle you with holy water and hope that you get better. So they didn't have a lot of knowledge about how the body's, how our body worked. Well, during this time, they start doing dissection and figuring out how exactly human bodies work. This, this helps them create medicines that are actually, actually effective in treating diseases. Now, all of these experiments that were going on, it was important for scientists to follow a certain method so that if everyone follows this method, their scientific experiment will be more accurate. The scientific method was come up by this guy right here. There he is, looking all cute and fine with his little funny scarf and his hat. His name is Francis Bacon. Now, first of all, since y'all are all wondering, no, he did not come up with bacon. Just like I did not discover the West, just because my last name is West. He just got lucky that his last name is Bacon, and that just happens to be a delicious meat product. So Francis Bacon has nothing to do with bacon. He has to do with the scientific method, an organized process for collecting and analyzing data, which as you can see, here are some of the steps of the scientific method. You will use these in your science class when you start doing labs. You question things, you do some research, you come up with a hypothesis, you come up with your procedure, you test your hypothesis, you come up with some data, you observe things, make conclusions redo your scientific experiment to see if you're correct, all that good stuff. All right, so inventions. During this time, they're doing a lot of different inventions, mostly because life is pretty hard. People would wake up in the morning, they would work all day. When the sun goes down, they would go to bed. So inventions are supposed to make life easier for people. As people create inventions, Life gets easier and people have more leisure time. Time to hang out with family and come up with sports like football and tennis. So we talked about Copernicus and Ptolemy, right? And all these scientists, they're trying to figure out how the earth works and how, how, where we are in our universe and how the human body works and all that good stuff. Well, some of the stuff that they came up with went against the church's teaching. Now, here you can see a picture of Pope John Paul. He was not the Pope during this time. and He's not the Pope now. However, his face right here is the perfect depiction of how the Catholic Church felt about some of these scientists. Because when Copernicus said that the Earth is not the center of the universe, it is the sun, the heliocentric theory, the Church lost their minds. What do you mean? The Bible is not wrong. The Church is infallible. So... The church is going to be pretty angry because these scientists are proving them wrong. What happens when the church is, is wrong? Well, the people of the church are going to be like, oh, they were wrong about the, the way the earth is, so maybe they're wrong about Jesus, and maybe they're wrong about sin, and maybe they're wrong about me having to give them money during offertory. So it makes the church look bad. So the church gets pretty angry at these scientists that contradict their teachings. Some of them they're going to accuse of heresy, which is anti-church teachings, or if you say something that is, uh, I guess, like against what the church believes, like if I went to my church and I was like, yeah, you know, uh, hell doesn't exist, and there really is no heaven, and Jesus lets squirrels go to heaven, or whatever, like I might say that would be against the church teaching, they could accuse me of heresy, saying something that the church does not believe in. So they would convict these scientists of heresy, and they would excommunicate them from the church. You, get out of the classroom. You, you naughty thing, get out of the classroom. When I kick you out of the classroom, I'm excommunicating you from the class. That's kind of what happens. They kick them out of the church. Now, in today's world, people might not care if they get kicked out of a church. Back then, people would freak out if you got kicked out of the church because that means you are not going to heaven. And if you don't go to heaven, there's going to be some bad times for you eternally. So, no one wanted to get excommunicated from the church, but people did. 
So the Catholic Church was pretty upset during the Scientific Revolution. Oh, here we got some more scientists. So here we go. Review Copernicus. Big giant sun means that he believes in the heliocentric theory. Earth orbited around the sun. Like that. Galileo agreed with Copernicus, and because he agreed with Copernicus, he was actually accused of heresy and excommunicated from the church and placed under house arrest. Still, he decided to still do some of his um, research in secret. Galileo also um, improved the telescope, and with his telescope, he saw mountains on the moon, and he discovered the Milky Way. There you can see, that's what a telescope looks like. There you can see the moon. Isaac Newton, another big guy. He is known for the law of motion and the law of gravity. He was out in his garden one day. He saw an apple fall from a tree. He's like, why would that apple fall from the tree and not just float around willy-nilly all like? So he wrote the law of gravity. He also wrote about the law of motion. If you throw something, it's going to stay in the direction that you throw it until it hits something. And then he discovered that white light contains all the colors of the rainbow. So Newton is the law of gravity guy, the law of motion guy, and the rainbow guy. Here's this guy, Kepler. There he is, looking all nice with his beard. And he's also got a funny little scarf just like bacon. It must have been the trend of the time kind of like skinny jeans or leggings. Uh, so Kepler basically said that planets do not move circular around the sun. They move in oval orbits called ellipses. So Kepler is the ellipses guy. And you can see this is not a circle. It is an oval. And the planets are moving around the sun because it's the heliocentric model in an oval. And our last guy, this guy here, not his friend, he doesn't have a cool scarf. His name is Descartes. He's more of a philosopher um, than a scientist. But he is the founder of modern rationalism, meaning he is uh, he's a philosopher. Uh, and he is going to do a lot of work with math and geometry and algebra and all that math that you guys love. He's also famous for his quote, I think... Therefore, I am. So, for the purpose of this class, you just need to remember that Descartes is the founder of modern rationalism. So that's it, guys. These are the scientists. There they are, looking all nice. All of their ideas. We can thank them for changing the world. And that's it for today. Holla!